Hello everyone. I hope you're all uh, staying safe. In this uh, concept talk, uh, we will be looking at the idea of uh, projection of a vector and uh, components of a vector. Okay. So let's start with uh, components and uh, the question is the following. Okay. So uh, given a vector, let's say F, okay. given a force vector, let's say. where f denotes a force and uh, we've already seen some time back when we discussed vectors and scalars that uh, force is a vector and this is uh, due to repeated observations without any exceptions okay so given a force vector f and given two directions let's say u and v and i'll draw the figure we want to find the components of f along u and v okay this is the first idea. and uh, so let me start off by drawing a force here okay so here is a force let's call that as capital f and uh, let's say that this force is acting at uh, some kind of a pin uh, pin support which we will see uh, once we start looking at the idea of rigid bodies and so on later down the line okay and let's say that i'm given two directions okay uh, these directions i'm going to call them as uh, u and v okay so here is uh, one direction which uh, i'm going to call as u and then uh, here is another direction which i'm going to call as v okay so this is direction u and this is direction v how do i find the components of this force so here is what i do I make use of uh, the parallelogram law of uh, vector addition essentially. So the basic idea here is uh, I'm told, okay, hey, these are the directions and this is the force. How do you find their components? So I essentially reverse how the parallelogram law is used. I take the resultant vector and then I try to find its components. In the parallelogram law, we saw that uh, we took the components and then we pinned them together and got the resultant which means that the resultant vector, which is the vector f here, has to be pinned with the components together, right? And that's the basic idea I'm going to be following. Okay, so here is what I'm going to do. From the head of uh, vector f, I'm going to draw a line parallel to u, okay? So which means that I'm going to take this line here, and I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to paste that. So this is a line that is parallel to uh, u, and so I'm going to draw it with uh, dotted lines. I don't need this entire length here. Okay, so I'm just going to draw a dotted line. This line is a parallel to U. And likewise, I'm going to draw a line that is parallel to the vector at the direction V from the head of uh, the force vector F. Okay, so I'm just going to draw a line this way. Okay, I don't need this part of the line. So I can get rid of that. And then, since it's a line that is parallel, not the actual direction itself, I'm going to draw it in dotted lines. So this is parallel to, to V. And then you see that the components are nothing but starting from the pinned point all the way to the point of intersection here is going to be the component of F along U. Okay, so I'm going to call it as F. I'm sorry, this is V, so this is F, V, and I'm going to depict it as subscript C. So this is the component of F along V. <coughs> and likewise, starting from the pinned point, I go all the way up to the point of intersection here, and you will see that uh, this creature that I've drawn here is going to be F, which is along the direction u and its component okay and uh, this is the component of f along the direction u okay and if i were given the angles between the line f and uh, 
uh, you know, the directions u and v, then I, I could, of course, use some kind of trigonometry to find uh, what these uh, components are, the magnitude of these components, right? So given, uh, given certain angles, which we will see in an actual problem, you know, given maybe, let's say, angle theta 1 and angle theta 2, then I could make use of some geometry to find the components. So essentially, to find the components, I'm using the parallelogram law of addition. Okay, so to find the components, we are using ideas from the parallelogram law of addition or rule of addition. Right, so that's the first question that we wanted to answer. Uh, the next question is this, okay, uh, given the same force vector F and given two directions U and V, find the projections of F along U and V. So in this case, uh, we had previously looked at the components of the vector. I'm sorry, I wanted to be straight here, okay. Uh, the next idea is, okay, given the same vector F and given the same directions U and V, how do I find the projections along u and v okay so let me write that statement down here okay um, so given vector f and given two directions u and v find the projection of vector f along directions u and v. Okay, this is the next question. And the key word here is projection. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, I start off with the same premise. I'm given the force. Okay, so here is the force. Then I'm given a pair of uh, directions. So first of all, here is the force F. Then I'm given a pair of uh, directions U and V. Same idea as before. Okay, so this is U, let's say. And then this is uh, V. Okay, so this is direction U and then direction V. How do I find the projection of the force F along the directions U and V? And here is what I do. Okay, to find the projection of uh, a force along a line, from the head of that force, I drop a perpendicular to that line or direction, okay? So from here, let's say I want to find the projection along the direction V. I drop a perpendicular, which means that this angle here is 90 degrees. And so starting from here all the way to where the point of intersection is, is going to be the projection of F along the direction V. So this is F, V, P. This is the projection of F along V. And likewise, if I have to find the projection of F um, in the direction of U from the head of F, I have to drop a line that is perpendicular to the uh, direction that I'm interested in. So this is perpendicular here, okay? And uh, so the projection is now going to be given by starting from the tail of F all the way on to where the intersection is taking place. Okay, and uh, this is going to be F, U, and P, P for projection. Okay, so this is the projection of F along U. <coughs> And you know from basic trigonometry that, uh, for example, if I know this angle to be an angle theta 1, and if I know this angle to be an angle theta 2, then the magnitude of F V P is nothing but F times cosine theta. Okay, so from basic trigonometry, okay, the magnitude of F V P is nothing but F times cosine theta 1 
and then the magnitude of f u p if i'm given the angle theta 2 and theta 1 this is going to be f cosine theta 2 and this is typically f v p without the arrow and then this is f u p okay and what i want to do is i want to show you pictorially side by side component and projection so i want to copy the component picture from previously um, so let's see if i can do a successful job of that i'm going to take this guy and i'm going to copy that and bring it down here okay this is the project components okay okay and uh, likewise i have the projection this is the figure that i want to copy okay so i want to take all of these creatures and then bring them down here and uh, these will be the projections okay and uh, <coughs> you see the basic idea if i maybe reduce the size of my screen here you see the basic idea that uh, the components are not necessarily the same as the projections and this is true only if the directions u and v are not perpendicular to each other okay so this is a very very important statement you can right away see that the length of fvp is not the same as the length of fvc length of fup is not the length of fuc and so for directions that are not perpendicular to each other the components are not the same as the projections okay so for directions that are not perpendicular to each other for given directions that are not perpendicular to each other The keyword here is not perpendicular okay the projections are not the same as the components as the projections in that particular case okay if the given directions are not perpendicular to each other but if the given directions are perpendicular to each other, then the components become the same as the projections. Okay, for given directions that are perpendicular to each other, right? The keyword being again that are perpendicular to each other okay previously they were not perpendicular to each other now in this case the components are the same as the projections okay <coughs> so they are the same in that case they were not the same in that case so these are two different situations and you can very well evidently see in uh, this uh, figure here that uh, the components are not the same as the projections because u and v are not perpendicular to each other okay uh, so maybe i want to make a note of that uh, you can see here uh, since u and v are not perpendicular to each other to each other the components of of f along u and v is not equal to projections okay and that's a, that's a really really important thing that i want to drill into you that if you 
have directions that are not perpendicular to each other the projections are not the same as the components but if you do have directions that are perpendicular to each other the components are the same as the projections and typically an example of uh, such a direction is going to be the cartesian coordinate system okay your cartesian cartesian coordinate system in which the directions are mutually perpendicular to each other your typical x y z axis okay the directions are perpendicular to each other and in such a situation then the components will be the same as the projections all right thank you very much